Hi, this video is all about the factors that affect the stability of a slope and those that could trigger the type of mass movement we might see, uh, such as in this photograph. Here. The first of these factors is the competence, or otherwise, of the rocks that were actually forming the slope. If we have uh, weak rocks, perhaps ones that are poorly cemented, uh, perhaps very recent, um, they're going to be incapable of supporting steep slopes, whether those are natural slopes, uh, such as coastal cliffs, or engineered slopes, such as road cuttings. These are, are very prone to um, failures such as rotational slumping, uh, or possibly even just flowing um, if we have uh, respectively erosion uh, undermining them or saturation with water increasing the pore water pressure. These are typically going to be um, recent fine grained um, sediment or sediments really rather than sedimentary rocks um, are going to be very vulnerable uh, to this type of failure. And certainly, they're going to be a very low competence. If we see uh, rocks that are very highly competent, we, uh, as a result, will see, uh, for example, very steep slopes that can be relatively stable. If we look here at the um, uh, granite cliffs in Cornwall, we can see these are virtually vertical uh, and relatively stable. You can see with the degree of weathering on these uh, rocks that these cliffs have been there for, for some time. So older, harder, better cemented sedimentary rocks uh, can create features like this. Um, also igneous rocks or, or even regionally metamorphosed rocks will um, have a high level of competence and as a result uh, create strong stable slopes. This is going to be related then to the rock type. The mineralogy of the rock will influence for example the the weathering processes that might occur. Um, the more weathered a rock gets the, the weaker it will become. So particular rock types are going to be uh, or show an increased vulnerability to mass movement than others. The structure of the rock also plays a significant role in this. In particular, the presence of what we call discontinuities. Planar weaknesses within uh, a rock that will be the area where any failure occurs. Now these can be of a number of different origins listed there, bedding planes, laminations, joints, pore spaces, cleavage, uh, faults. Any of those can create this planar uh, weakness within a rock and that is where, for example, water might get into the rock and it's where friction between uh, parts of the rock will be lowest. So it's crucial as geologists that we understand how many of these things there are, the uh, distribution of them through the rock, um, and also their orientation, which way are these uh, aligned. As always with engineering geology, we need to consider water. The water content of a slope um, will have a significant influence on the stability of that slope. As a general rule, as water content increases, slope stability decreases. And the reason for that is uh, water will create what we call poor water pressure. The pressure of this water trying to uh, expand within the rock um, will force particles apart, reducing cohesion, reducing friction, um, and leading to mass movements such as the one we see here um, on the A470 in Wales.
The angle of the slope plays a role as well, although it will depend on the nature of the material that makes up the slope. Most loose material, um, for example sand uh, or gravel, if you just sort of pour it into a pile, will come to rest at an angle of about 35 degrees. But other materials, for example clay, uh, even a 10 degree slope uh, in a clay slope may be unstable. The steeper the slope uh, that we're dealing with, the greater the influence of gravity on that slope becomes. It has a bigger effect on steeper slopes. Once we have the effect of gravity being greater than the uh, friction that holds the slope in place, that's when we'll have a mass movement. There are some other factors that have an influence as well. Vegetation. Vegetation generally helps to stabilise slopes. It's why some engineered slopes are deliberately vegetated to hold them together. Though there is perhaps a limit to how much uh, vegetation can stabilise a slope. So, if we think about the types of processes that do occur. Depending on how the material moves, we could have a fall, a slide, a slump, a flow, a wash or even creep of soil. All at different speeds, all with different, uh, slightly different mechanisms. All of these though will occur where gravity is overcoming the friction that holds the slope in place. So, if we think about the things that actually trigger this mass move, these mass, these mass movements, we've mentioned already water, poor water pressure, perhaps as a result of prolonged rainfall, leading to a rise in the water table, can reduce the cohesion of a slope. There's a very strong link between uh, rainfall amounts and landslide hazards. Seismic events can trigger mass movements. If we have a slope that's already a little bit unstable, shaking that slope can redu again reduce the cohesion and a mass movement will occur. This um, particular mass movement uh, occurred in ta Taiwan after a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. If we remove material, from the toe or the bottom of the slope, that can reduce the um, force that retains that um, slope in place. The classic place where this happens is on sea cliffs, where the sea is eroding the, undercutting the bottom of a cliff, which will eventually undermine the top and lead to a mass movement. But it's not the only place where it occurs. Uh, rivers can do this, or even human activity. In some parts of the world, deforestation can lead to mass movement, particularly in areas of very high rainfall. Or where we change the profile of a slope. And this is really where human influence comes in. That might be increasing the angle of a slope uh, through um, dumping mine waste. For example, the, the slate mines in North Wales that have dumped large quantities of loose material in these steep uh, slopes on the mountainsides. In South Wales, we had uh, dumping of uh, coal waste uh, on the valley sides that, uh, in some cases, tragically led to uh, mass movements. This could also be, though, engineering a slope, digging a slope out, perhaps in a quarry, uh, or for a, a road cutting, which will again change the angle of that slope. So, to conclude, there are a lot of factors that we geologists need to consider when we're determining the level of risk of mass movement. 
we need to understand the geology uh, of the rock, of its structures, and crucially, the water within that uh, rock, if we're going to be able to uh, understand, predict, and manage mass movement hazards. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.